Thanks, uh, Michael, very much. I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, Promune is a small startup biotech company that emanates from my technology that's been developed in my lab uh, here at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Our company focuses on the therapeutic applications of a novel approach for treating infections known as host-directed immune therapy, or a reawakening of the body's own natural innate immune defenses against any kind of an infection. These immune defenses are called upon early on during the course of any kind of an infection and actually represent the first line of immune defense against any kind of an infection. And we've demonstrated that uh, host-directed immune therapy can be quite effectively and very safely induced by the administration of our lead therapeutic candidate, EP67, which is a small structurally engineered peptide <clears throat> that's been derived from a naturally occurring protein component of the mammalian immune system. Now, a substantial and growing market problem in human health and animal health, interestingly enough, emanates from the use of antibiotics. And the reason for this is that the mechanism of action of an antibiotic is to kill the bacteria directly. And so the overuse and oftentimes the misuse of antibiotics over the years has imposed certain mutational pressures on the bacteria that have now forced them to develop a variety of evasive mechanisms to avert these direct killing effects. And the result, of course, is the generation of antibiotic resistant strains such as MRSA. Now you add into this mix the fact that over the years there's been a very remarkable and kind of an alarming decrease in the number of new antibiotics that are being developed to, to, to replace those that are being ineffective. And so the market trend is most absolutely geared towards and headed towards the development of, of, of new and alternative approaches that can minimize the use of antibiotics and the detrimental health-related impact of, of bacterial resistance but yet provide therapeutic efficacy against normal bacteria and now this growing problem of antibiotic resistant bacteria. Now a good example of this in animal health, in production animals specifically, is a, an infection that is called uh, exudative epidermidis, which is also known as greasy pig syndrome. This happens to be a uh, dermal staph infection that secretes an oily, kind of a blackish looking toxin, hence the term greasy pig. Uh, it'll typically start off as just a small localized infection, but if you don't get on top of that straight away, it can really take off like a shot and really basically uh, take, uh, cover the pig. Uh, the pig becomes absolutely consumed by it virtually. Um, it turns out that um, the, the this, this staph bacteria that's responsible for a greasy pig, like uh, virtually all infections in veterinary medicine, is being treated with antibiotics, penicillin, amoxicillin, things like that. And like typical of these, uh, uh, of these bacterial infections, this staph infection is getting more and more antibiotic resistant. Greasy pig syndrome is becoming more and more difficult to treat, and it's imposing a much, much greater economic impact to uh, swine producers. So it's starting to get to be a big problem. Now, in marked contrast to the direct killing effects of an antibiotic, EP67 will specifically engage and activate a population of immune cells that are, play a prominent role in innate immunity, that first line of immune defense. Once activated by EP67, these cells then go out on the hunt and hone in on bacteria and consume bacteria via natural cellular mechanisms. And so this this mechanism of action offers up a, a number of, of very important therapeutic and, and competitive advantages. Number one, it minimizes the need for bacteria to develop the evasive mechanisms because in this particular case, the therapeutic mode of action is not directed towards nor is it imposed upon the bacteria. It's actually uh, directed against your own innate immune system. Uh, so that minimizes the need for bacteria to develop evasive mechanisms. It reduces the need for uh, the use of antibiotics. And also importantly, because of those two differences in mechanism of action, this is a, a therapy that can stand alone on its own, we believe, but it also can be used in conjunction with and as a complement to standard antibiotic therapies to deliver a potentially powerful dual therapeutic assault on the infection. So EP67 and its ability to induce host-directed immune therapy is really a, a, a platform technology. Uh, we've demonstrated this uh, in several models of infection in mouse models, uh, specifically staph infections, MRSA specifically, strep infections, viral infections with influenza A, and fungal infections with uh, coccidia oides, which is the fungal spore that actually gives rise to valley fever. 
Uh, so our market entry point is then we want to try to use this method of EP67 in inducing host-directed immune therapy specifically against greasy pig syndrome uh, as applied by a topical spray. Uh, this is a relatively small and kind of a niche market. We think we could generate anywhere from 10 to 12 million dollars a year annually in the United States. But the whole point I want to try to underscore here, this is more of a proof of concept. We want to try to get our foot in the door with greasy pig syndrome and then have that as a, as a, to open up the doors and have a portal into the larger markets, the broader animal health markets, using EP67 and host-directed immune therapy as a, as a platform into much larger things like porcine reproductive um, and respiratory syndrome, equine herpes, and then eventually into, uh, with time, human markets. Uh, we have uh, been generating a little bit of data. This is just a, a, a very small and representative example of a uh, greasy pig syndrome, exudative, epidem uh, exudative epidermidis lesion, untreated and then treated with EP67. So we're demonstrating some, some nice therapeutic efficacy and we want to continue this on. Uh, the Promune team is made up of, of me, uh, Dr. Kelly Lechtenberg, who is our chief medical officer, uh, Mark Hirschfeld, who handles business development, and Todd Richardson, our legal counsel. Um, some competitive advantages that we have with this technology, we think, is that currently there's nothing on the market in animal health that utilizes anything, um, any, any kind of a compound to induce host-directed immune therapy. That's something that is quite unknown in the, in, in the market. Um, Against that backdrop, this puts us in a nice position where we don't have to position ourselves to compete directly with conventional antibiotics. And in fact, uh, EP67 mediated host directed immune therapy can actually be used as a complement to standard antibiotic uh, therapy to deliver a potentially powerful dual therapeutic assault on infections. EP67 is very inexpensive to synthesize and generate roughly two cents a dose and it actually has a shelf life of decades at, uh, at room temperature. Um, in terms of uh, technology validity, uh, EP67 uh, is an, an ability to induce host-directed immune therapy. is covered by seven U.S. patents with one pending. Uh, we've demonstrated proof of concept in numerous animal models and, and human cells, all supported by uh, peer-reviewed publications, 41 peer-reviewed publications. And over the years, we've been kind of in business. We've generated uh, $2.8 million in competitive federal grant funding from the National Institutes of Health, all related to the use of EP67. Uh, progress to date, uh, we're, we're cooking along. We have uh, exclusive option license granted to us from uh, Unimed Corporation, UNMC. And we've been able to get a, uh, generate a grant from the State Department uh, of Economic Development for what they call a phase one study for $100,000. This was actually leveraged by us with an STTR grant that we currently have right now from uh, the NIH for the use of EP67 as a possible treatment for asthma. Uh, greasy pig model has been well established uh, and we're doing efficacy studies in a much larger cohort. Uh, we've established good partnerships with uh, Midwest Veterinary Services in Oakland, Nebraska, and the Veterinary and Biomedical Research Center Incorporated of Manhattan, Kansas, that's helping us along with these studies. Um, against that backdrop, we're very nicely positioned to receive what the state of Nebraska calls Phase Two funding for uh, $400,000 now to continue the study into uh, our larger cohort of, um, of um, uh, animal studies. Uh, we've also, as Mike mentioned, we were one of, uh, Promian was just one of 12 other companies that was invited to present at the uh, 2013 uh, Kansas City Animal Health Consortium Investment Forum. This is just back uh, last October with a, uh, a small write-up in the uh, uh, journal Animal Farm. Uh, milestones, uh, what we're trying to do here within the next seven or eight months is to finalize our proof of concept model in the greasy pig, optimize uh, formulation, dosing and scheduling of EP67. Uh, second milestone we'd venture off into is to initiate the safety toxicity study, uh, pharmacokinetic studies, with the goal of generating a, a conditional new animal drug application, establish partner, uh, corporate partners for regulatory management, uh, regulatory uh, and marketing expertise, and then finally, um, it, within two years, milestone three, try to market uh, uh, this um, under the conditional new drug designation and acquire, continue to acquire efficacy data, uh, specifically with the goal of trying to generate a new animal drug designation 
for ultimately USDA and FDA approval of the, of the compound. And our exit strategy is relatively straightforward, nothing too complicated here. Corporate acquisition by a pharmaceutical company. But uh, importantly, pharmaceutical companies uh, uh, against a broad therapeutic sweep. Companies that could be involved in antibiotics, infective agents, vaccines, topical drug delivery, cell-based theories. Another possibility is to retain licensing options and sub-license to these companies and get royalty streams back into Perlmune to continue the research and development. And um, I appreciate this opportunity. This is a great venue. Mike and the gang at uh, Unimed, terrific idea. Appreciate it, and I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> It doesn't. Well, we, it doesn't because the mechanism of action is to activate your own immune system. So there's nothing, there's nothing inherent, as best as we can tell, there's nothing inherent for the, the bacteria to build up any uh, resistance to. Well, yeah, that's a good question. Right now, we are, we're doing this with, with topical. Uh, this is going to be by uh, uh, just a topical spray for a localized infection. And in truth, we don't really know too much about whether or not it'll eventually go systemic. Now, we do know if we go subcutaneous and we do other types of injections, we can generate a more systemic type of a response. But the magnitude of that response and how effective it is against uh, infections is still yet to be determined. I'm sorry, say again? Yeah, well, we, uh, as, with, based on the models that we've generated so far in mice and uh, a handful of pigs, it's, uh, it's permanent. The infection does not come back. Now, that's not to say that you've built, uh, that's not to say that you could not get another infection in another location, but once that, once that lesion has been treated with EP67, it does not come back. Anything else? Thanks. Yes, one last one. I'm sorry? No, it doesn't have anything to do with bacteria. It's, uh, it's, we actually activate uh, antigen-presenting cells. So the mode of action is to specifically activate that complement of antigen-presenting cells, macrophages, dendritic cells. Those are the things then that go out and consume the bacteria by normal phagocytosis, things like that. Yeah, it worked for viruses. We've demonstrated that. It'll work for fungal infections as well. So. Oh. Uh, yeah, we have, and there, and you know, nothing, uh, nothing too sophisticated, but uh, you know, just from looking at uh, some histology, uh, cell makeup, things like that, there, there is absolutely no difference in the before and the after exposure to EP67. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, there was just one problem. Yeah, yeah. No, we'd love to. That's, uh, that's ultimately what we'd like to do is to get this, uh, try, try to set the stage here in veterinary medicine and then have that kind of you know, be a platform from which we could venture off into, make a, make a better case and a stronger case for getting some things into human trials. Absolutely. Okay, thanks very much. <clears throat>